So I am a boy mom. Thank you. Uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, so my oldest son was born like super cautious, just naturally, and would never go near traffic or like the ocean or anything. It was fantastic. And then I had Graham, who is naturally dangerous. So <laughs> Graham uh, was born basically trying to constantly kill himself, running out into traffic, running into the ocean. I always think those like child backpacks are kind of stupid, but I almost bought one. Uh, so one one time I had him in the pool actually and he was like fighting me but he was like one fighting me fighting me so I thought okay I'm gonna let him go for just a second and when he realizes like I will drown I can't breathe under the water then he'll be naturally afraid of the water which would be great so I let him go and he's laying there in the water underneath the water just smiling staring at me <laughs> and I'm like okay how long do I let this happen uh, so eventually I like grab him and to which he like punches me in the face and is like, let me go woman. So uh, basically he's left his whole life like totally stubborn, like I, I know nothing and you know, just really a fighter. So um, a year ago in August, right before he started fifth grade, the night before fifth grade, uh, he started um, just really high fever and throwing up. And I'm not a mom who like takes kids to the hospital, <laughs> really. I'm like, you're fine, have some Tylenol, it's gonna be good. But I really was like, this feels different to me, something is not right. So I took him to the doctor and they gave him a bunch of fluids and stuff and said, he probably, we think he has strep throat, so just go home. So I went home with him and throughout the night I just kept thinking, like, I don't think this is right, I just don't feel good. So I took him back to the emergency room, to which I woke up my husband, who's not even concerned at all. And he's like, uh, you're going back to the emergency room? Room? Weren't you just there? And I'm like, yeah. So I take him back to the emergency room. And by the time we get there, I just, he's not himself. Something is totally wrong. It's five in the morning. I go in. They're like, weren't you just here? Yes, I was just here. So we go in. He's like disoriented. They take his fever and his temperature is over 105. And they can't get him to calm down. They can't start an IV. They can't do a brain scan. They can't do anything. So as I'm sitting there with him and they're trying to do an IV, he starts shaking and I can vividly remember, I was like, why is he shaking? Why is he shaking? So they rushed me out of the room into the other room and from the other room, like total full out ER episode, I can hear them working on him, which like ER is cool until it's you and then it's not cool anymore. So I'm listening and they are like, you know, machines and there's a drill. I'm like, why is there a drill? And all this stuff is happening and eventually they come back and get me and, the, for the next 24 hours, I, I don't have a very good memory, but I can remember such specifically things that happened. I can remember going in his room and uh, the machine was on him and he was breathing mechanically. And I just thought that's really weird. I remember they wanted to take him to another hospital and the, the uh, person came in, the paramedic, and said, I need you to hold on to the stretcher and run. I remember the doctor saying, if this was my kid, I would treat him the same way, looking in my eyes. I remember sitting in the MRI room for hours trying to meditate while the machine was going off. I just remember all this stuff so vividly. I remember the infectious disease doctor coming in and saying to me, um, we're gonna rush his spinal fluid to the lab and if we find amoebas in it, he will start to deteriorate. He said that word, to which I said, uh, so that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Uh, you guys are gonna do your job, and I, this is literally what I said, like looking back on it, it's kind of weird, but I was like, this, you're gonna do your job, and I'm gonna leave here with my kids, so work it out, and do your doctor thing, and then let me know when he's fine. So uh, they left with his fluid, and ran to the hospital. Uh, I remember, he, it turned out he didn't have amoeba, which was fantastic news, but he wasn't getting a lot better. So I remember two days later, the neurologist came in and said, we're gonna try to wake him up uh, from the coma we put him in. And I remember them opening his eyes and they were little pins. And for an hour, they asked him to squeeze my hand and open his eyes and talk to me, and he didn't do it. And I remember the next day they came back and they tried it again. And I thought, really, we're gonna try this again? Cause that was like the worst hour of my life. And I pretty much am throwing up and I just can't do this. So they did it again. And about halfway through it, about half an hour into it, uh, I saw his eyes focus on me. And he said, I have to pee. 
which of course he said I have to be because he's a male. It's like all bodily fluids in my house at all times. So this wasn't surprising to me. It was the greatest thing I ever heard. And over the next few weeks, he slowly, slowly started to get better. Um, and they didn't know what he had until weeks later. Um, when he was getting better, I, he said to me, can I talk to you? And I said, okay. And he said, can you do me a favor? Every time the doctors come or anything happens or any test, you rub me and you say, you're okay, you're okay. And I don't feel okay. Don't tell me I'm okay anymore. Uh, and I said, okay, fine. I need you to be okay, but fine. Uh, and uh, weeks later, we found out that he had got bitten by what I call one fucking mosquito uh, and had uh, California encephalitis virus, which um, took a lot of physical therapy and a lot of work for him to recover from. And I watched him, his stubborn, brave self who didn't need me, fight. And a week ago today, last Wednesday night, he took his last seizure pill uh, and is completely off medication. And I, even then I cried, I just needed him to be okay. But what I realized is even when he's not, he's okay.